Today we're making a sunflower bookmark. But in the process of me making this bookmark, my head exploded with ideas. So many different things that you could do with this sunflower. I had this idea of taking a piece of cardstock, folding it in half, and gluing this flower to the front of the card, making a very personalized summary card that would make anybody smile. I also had this idea of taking a very plain blanket, or a little girl's dress, or a summer top, or even a plain beanie, that needed a little something extra and just attaching this sunflower to the outside of it, just sewing it right on top and how much it adds, this flower adds to the item itself, really ups the level of the entire project. So in the description section of this video, I'm going to say that this is a sunflower bookmark slash motif because <laughs> really you could use it for both. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks. You're not going to want to miss out. The pattern for this sunflower bookmark slash motif is located in the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on the link print off the pattern and be ready to crochet with me. I will also include the link here at the bottom of the screen. All you have to do is pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern and be ready to crochet with me. This pattern is extremely simple. You really don't need the pattern to make this flower. Just follow along with me in the video. Though the pattern is a nice reference, especially if you wanna make more than one and just refer back to the pattern and not watch the video over again. Make sense? All right, once you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need to make the sunflower bookmark slash motif. <laughs> the materials that you're going to need to make the sunflower bookmark slash motif are three different colors of yarn. I have a brown, a yellow, and a green, the middle of the flower, the flower petals, and the stem and leaves. You can absolutely change the colors depending on if you want to change the colors of the flower petals or change the color of the stem itself. It's up to you on however you want to make this work. The exact color yarn that I have here are Karen Simply Soft and Chocolate, Sunshine, and Pistachio. This is just a size four weight worsted medium Erin 1012 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. So really use whatever colors you want in that size. The crochet hook that you are going to need is a size G6 or four 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. A 4.25 millimeter will work great as well. A yarn needle, tapestry needle to weave in all of your ends at the end of the project and a pair of scissors to cut your yarn between each step. Once you've gathered up all your materials, let's head straight into actually making our sunflower bookmark slash motif. We begin with the brown or the chocolate color yarn and our crochet hook. We wanna start with a long tail, so roughly about five, six inch long tail before we create our slip knot. So creating our slip knot, attaching our crochet hook, ready to go. We wanna make this really long tail. So when we are done making our flower, we are going to attach the flower to the stem with this yarn right here, okay? We are working the center of the flower right now. The center of the flower is worked in rounds. So you can either begin with the chain two method or a magic ring. I prefer the chain two method. One, two. For round one of our flower, we're going to make six half double crochets in the first chain, or we will make six half double crochets inside of our magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, great. Go ahead and slip stitch. I'm gonna put this tail underneath. You're going to slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet stitch. Slip stitch, and that just closes our round. There's our circle. For round two, we will chain one and make two half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. This is also known as an increase half double crochet stitch, just making two half double crochets in each stitch all the way around. You should end round two with a total of 12 half double crochet stitches. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and eleven. 12. Great. Slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet to close round two. And we are left with this circle right here. Grab your scissors and we can cut a shorter tail long enough for us to weave in our ends. So however long you need, let's move our beginning tail out. So forever, however long you need your tail to be to weave in your ends. And then we are done with the brown color yarn. Take the yarn that was that we just cut, yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot, and we have just sealed our work. Grab the yellow color or whatever color that you want to use for your petals. Beginning with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project, create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook. Great. So I am going to attach my yellow color onto the center of my flower right in the same stitch that I just slip stitched into to close that round two. So that shows you where to start. That knot, insert your crochet hook in that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your crochet hook for a slip stitch. We are now ready to make our first petal. Chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. Half double crochet in the third chain from your crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, one, two, three, so in that third chain, make your first half double crochet stitch, one, and make one half double crochet stitch in the next five chains. One, two, three, four, five, perfect. So you should end with a total of six half double crochet stitches before you get to the end of your petal. Slip stitch in the same stitch that we began with. So you already have a slip stitch in this stitch. Re-insert your crochet hook, same stitch, slip stitch and that closes off petal number one. You will make one petal for each stitch all the way around. So you should have a total of 12 petals by the time you finish this flower. To get to your next petal, I will slip stitch into the stitch to begin. Chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Half double crochet in the third chain from my hook. One, two, three. Half double crochet there. And then half double crochet in the next five chains. One, two, three, four, five, perfect, total of six half double crochet stitches. I will slip stitch back into that same stitch that I began with, and then slip stitch into the next stitch over to start my next petal. Go ahead and continue this pattern on all the way around, making a total of 12 petals. I will meet you at the end here to show you how we close off the top of the flower and move on to the stem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. six. Great. 
slip stitch into the same stitch to close that petal. I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve petals. I have all of my petals. I will slip stitch into the stitch of the very first petal to close off these petals so that way there is a seamless yellow all the way around. And I am done so I can grab my scissors, cut a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends. Yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot, and the top of our flower is now complete. Let's move on to the stem. Grab our green color. With the green color, start with the tail long enough for us to weave in our end, create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. We are ready to begin. Start by chaining 40 chains. One, Two, three, four, 38, five, 39, 40. Great, okay, now that we have all 40 chains, if you look at one side of your chain, you'll see all of these beautiful V stitches. If we turn that chain over, you will see what looks like, like a chain link. What we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into that link. So finding the second chain from our crochet hook, and we can look at the side with our V-stitches. So V1, V2, turn that over. See this link? I just want to go underneath that top link right there, just underneath one yarn, leaving my V-stitch on the bottom. Yarn over, pull through, pull all the way through for a slip stitch. Okay, looking at our next link, I'm going to go through that center yarn and slip stitch. Next one, the center yarn, slip stitch. Repeat this process all the way across this chain and I will meet you at the end of this chain to show you what we do next. Oh, last chain here, slip stitch, perfect, and we're done. You may notice that this chain or this stem of our flower now looks more like a rope. It creates this very thin circular appearance opposed to if we were to just make a single crochet or slip stitch in our regular stitches. Really cool look. All right, grab our scissors. We can cut a short tail long enough for us to weave it in, but we don't need anything more than that. And then take your crochet hook, yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop on your crochet hook, and pull tight for a slip knot. And that's our stem. That's it. All right, let's push our stem off to the side. We are now going to start working on our leaf. Now the beautiful thing about the leaves is you can make as many of them as you want. You can stick with one, make two, make four, six, eight, have the whole stem filled with leaves. <laughs> you have as much fun with it as you want. Now we are going to begin with a tail long enough, then we will create our slip knot, touch our crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. We start by chaining eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. We will single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So one, two, single crochet. Next stitch, we'll make a half double crochet. Half double crochet, there we go. Next stitch is a double crochet. One, and next stitch is another double crochet. And next stitch is another double crochet for a total of three double crochet stitches. Two chains left. Next chain will be a half double crochet. Half. Next chain will be a single crochet. 
boom, right there. Perfect. So you should have half of your leaf, single crochet, half double crochet, three double crochets, and then a half double crochet and a single crochet. Chain two, one, two, slip stitch into the first chain you made slip stitch and that creates the point of the leaf. Now we will start working on the other side of this leaf. I'm going to take that tail that I made and I'm going to push it against the stitches so I can crochet over it. First stitch will be a single crochet. Next stitch will be a half double crochet. Next three stitches will be double crochet. One, two, three. Next stitch is a half double crochet. And the very last stitch will be a single crochet. To tie off this leaf, I will slip stitch into the very first single crochet to create a rounded bottom and just finish off the leaf. And that is your leaf. You can point the end there. There you go. That's the leaf. Grab your scissors. Again, cut a long tail. If you don't feel like that's long enough for you to attach your leaf to your stem, Yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop, pull tight for a slip knot, and now that leaf is ready to be attached to your stem wherever you want to put it. And you can make as many as you want, and you can have like one leaf next to one leaf, or you can stagger them. And I have seen a couple people add leaves to the very bottom of their stem, and that looks really pretty too, especially for a bookmark. All right, so you make as many leaves as you want. I'm going to move straight on to assembly because that's all that really matters for you. You can assemble all these pieces as many as you want. I'm going to start by weaving in all of my ends, cleaning up the project. I like to tie these together because it makes it nice and clean at the top. So take a second, weave in your ends. So for the leaf, leave the longest yarn out and weave in the shortest one. Weave in both of these ends. And for the flower, weave in all of your yellows. Those get woven in. You can weave in the brown yarn that's closest to the yellow, but keep out the brown yarn that's coming out of the center of the flower. We want this yarn to help us attach the center of the flower to the top of the stem. All right, so yeah, take a second, weave in your ends, and I'll see you in just a minute. All right, great. Here are all of our pieces ready to go. Everything has been woven in, and now we're ready to attach pieces. So I start with the top of the flower before I touch any leaves, just so that way I know exactly how far down the petals go before I attach my leaves. So I will take my yarn needle, tapestry needle, Thread that yarn through. And I will just take the very tip of the stem and go through and then attach to the center. We're going to the middle here. I want it to be very center. And I'll go over the top. Center. And then I will come into the work close to where my yarn is coming out. Insert my yarn needle. Okay, hold some of that yarn back. Twist it so it forms this X shape. Bring my needle over the front, through the loop. Pull the needle all the way through the loop. And I'm going to slowly 
guide that loop as I pull my needle so that way the yarn, I control where the knot goes. The yarn doesn't form a knot way high with a bunch of slack underneath. There we go. All right, so we formed our knot. We've secured everything. I'm gonna take my needle, go through the work, pull it through, and grab my scissors. And by pulling the yarn through the work one last time, that means that I'm not cutting my yarn right next to the knot. If you cut your yarn right next to the knot, you risk the knot coming undone. So I try to do that last little bit to allow myself to cut the yarn away from the knot. Great. So here is the flower attached to the stem and we are ready to attach our leaf. When it comes to the leaf, leave that. There we go. I'm gonna have the flower be upside down. I want the flower to be facing the ground or away from me so I'm looking at the wrong side or the side that I don't want facing me. I'm gonna take my leaf. I like this side. This is the right side, the side I want showing. So I'm gonna face that down and I'm gonna look where do I want the leaf. I'm gonna come through the back of the stem Towards the back of it and then over and then touch the pieces and through and tight. go. Now before we decide to tie anything off, look at the front of your leaf. See if you're happy with it. If you are happy with how it's attached. Once you think it looks great, go back to the back. Go through some yarn on the project. Hold some of the yarn back. Twist it until it forms that X shape. So this yarn is on the top, this yarn's on the bottom. I wanna take my yarn needle and go over and underneath the bottom most yarn and slowly feed it. There we go. So it's tight. Then again, I will reinsert my yarn needle into the stem and I will kind of weave in that end a little bit further down and that is where I will cut. I'll cut the yarn down here away from the knot. And that is my flower. All right, so what did you think of your sunflower? Let me know in the comment section below. Were there any spots that were a little tricky or did you think this was exceedingly simple and you plan on making a whole bunch of them? I really like hearing your feedback and what you thought about the video. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.